Hi guys, so in the past lessons, I've obviously been learning uh, notation on the piano, um, how to read notation on the stave. Uh, I think it's about time now that we combine both together and start to play a little bit of something on the piano. So our learning objective today is to begin playing melodies on the piano. Our success criteria is to successfully identify the notes on the, of the piano or on the piano um, and to perform various melodies on the piano. Are you ready? So today is a little bit different with regards to resources. Um, it's the same things in, in terms of pen, pencil, green pen, paper to write on or a Word document and your knowledge organizer. Um, extra things you need today. If you don't have access to a piano or keyboard at home, which some won't, some may, um, I'll need you to download a piano app either onto your computer or onto your phone. I would probably say your phone because it's a bit easier because it'll be touch screen. Yeah. So just search piano in the app store. Um, it might be different for Androids or iPhones, but if you can download some, any, really, any piano app onto your phone and yeah, then you'll be all prepped for this lesson. If you've not got this sorted yet, pause the video and yeah, we'll continue. If you look in the bottom right-hand side, this is the one that I downloaded essentially. Um, but yeah, I've searched piano app just here and you can see that you've got a, a variety of different ones that come up. Make sure it's free. Don't get one that you have to pay for. You don't need to pay for these. It's completely free. Okay. Right. Pause the video guys and we'll continue. So if you'd like to go and complete the retrieval activity sent to you, um, either by your email or to your Google docs and um, complete that, and then you can continue on to the next slides once you've finished that. Yeah. So I'm not one to normally play videos, but we've um, obviously covered piano. We've also covered the notes in the stave. This is just a video of somebody else just explaining this in a, a slightly different light and also in a similar light. And I think sometimes sharing a video just gives someone else's, someone else's perspective and sometimes probably explains it better than what I do as well. So yeah, enjoy. Hopefully this helps. Each note on the piano has its own place on the musical stave. By the way, some people call this a staff, not a stave, but it's the same thing. Each stave has five lines, and a fancy symbol at the beginning called a clef. This is called the treble clef, and this is the clef used for piano music written for the right hand. The curly bit in the middle of the treble clef makes a circle around the line second from the bottom. Notes written on this line have the pitch of G. So this clef is also sometimes called the G clef. We use up all the lines and spaces. Notes rise up the stave as they rise up in pitch. The note D that you found on your keyboard is written here under the stave. It's the lowest note that you can write on a five-line stave. The note on the next line will be E. And after that is F. And so you keep on going. Obviously, there are a lot more notes on a keyboard than there are on the stave. But that's OK. We can extend the stave upwards or downwards by writing notes on short lines called ledger lines. Grab your keyboard and see how quickly you can find these notes. Pause the video when you see each note on the stave and then watch the video again to check if you were right. Cool. Now, some of you might be still confused by all of that. 
hopefully not. Um, but just remember the steps that we've all broken down beforehand, okay? Remember the um, every good boy deserves football, yeah? And the face in the space. And that's going to help you to memorize the notes on the stave and then link that to the notes on the keyboard. Now, once again, this is a diagram I showed you numerous times. And you can see here that all the notes here relate to the notes on the actual stave. So you've got the bass clef stave here, yeah? And the treble clef stave here. And you notice that it goes from the bass clef and slowly moves up or gradually moves up, sorry, um, up into the, the the higher stave essentially for the higher notes, yeah. Okay, so I want you to pause the video and just answer the following questions. Okay, so what happens to the pitch when we move to the right of the piano? What happens to the pitch when we move down the stave to look out for the words? What happens to the pitch when we move to the left of the piano? Okay, I want to pause the video. It should be quite a quick task, and then we'll continue. Alrighty, so. For the first one, what happens when we move to the right hand side of the piano? Quite simple. The notes get higher, higher in pitch. Yeah. Second one, what happens to the pitch when we move down the stave? Once again, quite a simple one. The notes get lower. And then finally, what happens to the pitch when we move to the left of the piano? It's going to be the opposite, isn't it? Yeah. It's going to get lower. I know it's quite simple, but in well all the students that i've taught beforehand they've kind of struggled with this um they've looked at say this note here and they notice that the next note is going to be an e so they're, they're playing the d they move to the e and they think right I'll, they'll they make it more complicated than what it needs to be and that's why i try and break these things down which are quite simple but as i say some may struggle so some people will have gone from this d and thought well i'm playing an e here so i'll go to this e here and actually you're moving up it's higher in pitch so it's a ladder when you climb up the ladder, you're going to get higher. When you climb down the ladder, you're going to get lower. And we know the order, or the um, the order of the piano, the keys on the keyboard on the piano. When we move to the right hand side, it gets higher. When we move to the left hand side, it gets lower. Yeah. So remember, little tip: C is to the left of the two black keys. Two black keys. Two black keys. Two black keys. Okay. Once you know that. Count up the musical alphabet. I want you to work out what each one of these notes are, okay? So there's going to be two notes for each one of these. Question one, two notes to identify. Question two, two, yeah. Question three, two notes as well. Yeah. Pause the video and we will go for the answers. And once again, for this success criteria, we are successfully identifying the notes of the piano once we do this. Yeah. All righty. Pause the video and we'll go to the answers after. Right, so for the first one, question one. C is to the left of the two black keys. We know there's two two black keys here. C, D. Yep. So we've got D, and then what's this up here? We know this is C here. So if we move left of C, we've got B. So we've got D and B. Yeah. For question two, answer just here. We've got A. So how do we work it out? C, D, E, F, G, A. Yeah. Same for this one, C, D, E. Yep. For the next one, question three, C, D, E, F, G. So that's G. And then C, D, E, F. So we've got G and F. Yeah. So these are your answers right here. There are other ways of memorizing stuff. I mean, like once you've figured out that C is to the left of the two black keys, you know that F is to the left of the three black keys. There's different ways of memorizing it. And eventually you just start to recognize the patterns anyway when you look at it. So once again, it's just practice makes perfect. So yeah, so far we've successfully identified the notes of the piano. Well done. Right, let's start putting some of this into practice. This is where you need your keyboard and also need your, or, or sorry, you need your app on your phone. Um, there's a bit of sheet music here. You can say it's kind of slightly sheet music. It's the first steps where I've given you the notes and also the height. So imagine that the height of this is just the stave. Okay, this is the ladder without the actual um, we have the actual lines, and this is essentially the first step to being able to just see what you are meant to be playing the note, and also if you're meant to be going up, so to the right hand side of the piano, or going down. Okay. Yep. Up equals right. Down equals left. Yeah. Um, and here's a quick demonstration for you. So notice when I play the piano, right, I'm not just using one finger. I'm not doing this. 
It might be different if you're using your phone. If you've got your own keyboard, it's gonna be much easier. If you're using your phone, it might be a little bit more difficult to use multiple fingers, but you wanna be able to extend your range. You wanna be able to use multiple fingers. Um, it just works out to be much better and you can play more fluently um, when you use multiple fingers, okay? So if you look at O to join now, you'll notice that it goes E, E, and then F, and then G. So I'm not going down to this F, because otherwise it'd be lower than the E. It's actually higher than the E, yeah? So it's gonna be this F just here. Yeah? First three notes. Second two notes. All right, together. Yep. And then it just drops down. Add it all together. That's O to Jury just there. Yeah, so the key thing is, is breaking it up into sections. Learn the first couple of notes, try and get the rhythm. Yeah, or at least try and get the, the notes correctly. And then once you've got that, start to add the, sec the next section on. Yeah, simple. So let's get some practice in. What I want you to do is to practice each one of these. You'll, you should recognize a lot of these, um, a lot of these different melodies. Now, I'm going to say a challenge task for you is to not only play it once, but try and play it four times with a steady pulse. Da, 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 da. Quite low for me. Da 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 And I obviously chose too low of a key right there for my own voice. Sorry if that's sadly shocking, but the the aim is is trying to play to a steady pulse. So you're not pausing in between the notes. You're still playing to the same. So think about your heartbeat. If your heart stops, what's going to happen to you? Yeah. Not two great things. So the same thing happens with music. If you are playing with a band and you're playing a certain melody and all of a sudden you pause and you think, all right, I need to continue. And then you continue. What's going to happen? You're going to be out of time with your band, aren't you? Yeah. So the key thing in music is to try and play to a steady pulse. Yep. So pick your tempo. It's not about playing fast. It's about playing in time. And that's, the, that's your key. So your challenge is... Once you've worked out each section, so play, you know, E, E, F. Once you've worked that out, add the second two notes on. The, sorry, the um, the next two notes on, so the two Gs, yeah, and so on. So just do it in sections instead. Maybe learn two notes at a time, whatever, whatever suits you. Because I do find that a lot of people try and play the whole thing in one go. And that's not always the best way to memorize something. It's learning each section, okay? Break it down into segments, learn it, add it together. Okay, almost like maths. Once you've done that, see if you can play the whole thing together, but numerous times. Okay. All right, guys. Good practice. And remember, practice makes perfect. Um, once we start to learn these more simple type songs, we can start diving into stuff that you're going to recognize. It's about breaking things down. It's about doing things in steps. Okay. We don't want to jump straight ahead to something that's going to be more complicated. That's going to be instant repelling you. Okay. So the key thing is practice makes perfect. Practice through these to a steady pulse on your piano, on your keyboard, whatever it is that you have at the moment and access to. And then we can start getting into uh, more interesting and probably more complex stuff as well. Yeah. Good practicing, guys. I will speak to you next week. Have a lovely week. And yeah, good luck with the piano playing.